Welcome to Beyond the Lab, a series by the Office of Career Development within the Biomedical Research Education and Training Department of the Vanderbilt University School of Medicine. My name is Kate Stewart, and I'm here today with Dr. Hugh Fentress. Welcome back. Thank and you. And you graduated in 2005 in neuroscience. Correct. So tell me about what you did when you were here at Vanderbilt. So I worked with Dr. Elaine Sanders Bush. Okay. Um, and at the time, she was interim chair of pharmacology. And so I did a bunch of neuropharmacology, but specifically I was looking at mutations and how they change signaling in serotonin receptors. And then I also did an association study where I looked at the occurrence of different mutations and polymorphisms in major depressive disorder. Okay, so what did you do after Vanderbilt? What was your path after? So after Vanderbilt, you know, since I did a lot of, a lot of human work, I decided I wanted to do more human stuff. So I went to the University of Michigan and did a postdoc there with uh, Huda Keel. Mm -hmm. And there I was using a different model. So even though I went there to do more humans, I ended up working on animal models. Okay. And so I did animal models of depression and bipolar disorder. And I also did some drug abuse work uh, where we overexpressed a protein in the brain of mice, injected them with cocaine, and did a bunch of behavioral studies. Interesting. Okay, so what did you do after your postdoc? So after my first postdoc, <laughs> I decided I missed Vanderbilt so much that I came back <laughs> and I actually did a teaching postdoc here, okay. a scientist uh, educator program. And that was the first year they opened up for the neurosciences. So I was 75% research. And so I did research on the norepinephrine transporter and I was 25% teaching and so I had to take a neuro, neuroanatomy year one, uh, then I was a teacher's assistant year two, and then year three I was an actual instructor okay. in neuroanatomy. So what do you do now? So now I'm an assistant professor at Tennessee State University. Okay. Tell me more about what you do there. Ooh. So uh, TSU is a historical black college university, um, and so mostly undergraduates. Uh, so I teach undergraduate courses as well as graduate courses. I have about seven students in a lab, so I have master's students, I have PhD students, and then I have four undergrads that work in a lab. So typically I teach undergrad course, graduate course, I train grads, undergrads, I'm on a bunch of committees, uh, still have to write grants, uh, and yeah. Uh, so if you had to do a percentage of teaching, research, and maybe administrative work, what would you say is the breakdown? Uh, Right now, I'm kind of, I would say 40 teaching, 40 research, and then the other 20 administrative type stuff. Okay. So what was maybe surprising that first year of being a faculty member? I know that's an interesting step. How hard it is to set up a lab, okay. teach, recruit students, train students, and write grants, and be put on committees at the same time. It was quite overwhelming. <laughs> but I'm sure this role is a good fit for you. So why is it a good fit for you personally? Yes, uh, because, you know, I, I love Vanderbilt and Research One institutions, but the primary focus is research. And I love research, but I'm also really interested in teaching. And I want to make sure that the next generation are well taught and trained. And that's where I got my training from at a smaller uh, HBCU, actually Tennessee State. Um, so that's one of the main reasons. I want my primary focus to be teaching, but I still want to be able to do research, write grants, and train students. Okay, so if there are students currently that are interested in doing a role very similar to yours, what are some of the things that you would recommend that they do now as, as a trainee to, to better equip themselves for that role? Make sure you write plenty of grants or fellowships. Okay. Um, you have to train students, so undergrads, high school students, uh, because all that's going to help you learn how to manage your time wisely because it's going to be very hard uh, if you haven't been in practice of writing the grants, training students, also serving on different committees or extracurricular activities on top of the actual research and classes. Okay. So tell me, the faculty interviewing experience is a unique one. Tell me about any of your experiences during your faculty search. Faculty search for me, I'm probably not the best person. Uh, I, I knew I wanted to stay in Tennessee, so I only applied to places that were open in Middle Tennessee, okay. and there were only two. Um, and I got an interview at one, the other one I didn't. Uh, 
the interview process itself wasn't bad. I gave a talk, met with different faculty, met with graduate students, talked about potential projects they could work on if I was to join faculty there and they were to join my laboratory. Uh, so that wasn't as bad. Um, yeah, and then I actually had another interview later because I'm actually at my second faculty position. And that was mainly over the phone, okay. uh, the first interview. And then uh, I came in, gave a talk again, did a chalk talk with students, talked about potential projects and told them how to, you know, how do you go about understanding signaling of neurotransmitter receptors. Okay. So I'm sure you've had to network quite a bit in your career throughout different ways. What are some of the strategies that you used, your, your sort of your personal approach to networking? Uh, so the way I was trained to network is I used to go with my PhD advisor to scientific meetings. And, you know, we would always say, you know, she would introduce us to the big wigs. And so you meet those people, you know, in your field that are doing similar things. These are the top people. And typically, you know, I come to find out they're the one that reviews your paper when you submit it. So it's nice to know them. Right. And, and to be kind and cordial to them. Uh, so that was the first way. Um, and then just, uh, you know, reading a paper and if I want to, you know, try to see if I can reproduce these results shoot an email to the person who writes the paper. Hey, we're thinking about this. Uh, do you mind telling us where you ordered this from? So I've tried that approach. That works well as well. Okay. So what job search or career tips would you have for current trainees who are about to enter the market? Uh, you need to try different things. Your mentor may or may not be <laughs> supportive of that. Um, but you, at, at the end of the day, you have to do something you love. Uh, because it's going to be quite busy and quite stressful and you have to, you know, want to wake up. And my motivation, no matter how I feel, is always if I don't go in the day, these students aren't going to learn something that they need to know or the students can't perform an experiment that they really need to do. And, and so that's my motivation. I do it all mainly for the students. Okay. So you have a teaching research load. That's a lot. How do you do that with your work-life balance? It's hard. Every day is a different day. Uh, today was a little different. Uh, but typically, I teach for one and a half up to three hours uh, most mornings. Then typically, as soon as I come in, I get bombarded by my students. So they have many, many questions about experiments they're doing or experiments they're trying to set up. So typically I'll meet with them for a couple hours, then maybe I'll eat lunch. Um, and then typically after that, that's when my office hours are, and that's when my students that I teach come in. And so then I meet with them and help them throughout the day. And in the process, I intertwine writing papers and grants and emails. Uh, okay. So it's, it's kind of hard, but again, if the more you do, I think at the graduate and postdoctoral level, uh, it prepares you for more for faculty positions. Okay, great. Thank you so much for coming back. We really appreciate it. Thanks. I'm just right across the street. So <laughs> anytime you need me, I'm here. Okay.